to the necro zoo i am bones and in this one we're going to take a look at the mcfarlane dc multiverse flashpoint batman figure now first up we have had only a couple of releases of this figure before one being the Flashpoint DC Direct figure. This is one I own that I've never opened. But although he does look really good and is stylized uh, perfectly to the Flashpoint figure, there's very limited articulation, uh, no guns, uh, nothing pretty much as to what we would come to know as Flashpoint Batman. This is just really like a simple, a simple stylized version of. Uh, the Thomas Wayne Batman. Of course, in the Flashpoint storyline, Flash makes a completely new timeline. In this timeline, actually, Thomas Wayne is the survivor of that night in Crime Alley, and he goes on to, you know, become a force of vengeance against the criminals. But he actually is violent, and he does use guns and uh lethal force and i think also he's a little bit of a has a little bit of an alcohol problem but i digest now after this i did end up making my own custom uh flashpoint batman figure and it took me a, a really long time to build I, i'd say it took me at least almost a year just to like get the different parts together and the guns and and you know just all the work it, it took me a really long time because i'm a big procrastinator sometimes and uh i finally did finish this right before mcfarland released uh his version but i still want to show this one off because i'm pretty proud of it now i did take the batman legacy modern batman figure as the main part the main body part and then I bought like the cheapest uh, New 52 Batman that I used the cape for and, and also the head. I got the guns offline. I'm not sure where they're from, but they look pretty sweet. They're like their own version of guns here. And then I did a lot of cool uh, detailing on the guns. And I had to add this circle in the front of the belt. And then the the holsters I actually got from a Crossbones Marvel Legends. But uh, once I got it all together, I ended up being really happy with the way this guy came out. Uh, he just looks pretty cool, even though it took me forever. I wish I would have had him like, when I was still collecting DC Classics. But um, it just took me a long time to, to get him together. But I really, really enjoy this figure. I'm really happy that uh, he's in my collection, even though now we have uh, a real uh, McFarlane release. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the McFarlane Thomas Wayne Flashpoint Batman. Looks pretty good in the package. He does come with his guns and the usual... Uh, fodder from McFarlane. First off, you get the black DC multiverse stand. Uh, now on stands, I've been using them, but actually, I I haven't had a really hard time standing the McFarlane figures. So I think once I start building my my shelves, I'm just gonna take off the stands and just uh, stand them straight up and display them like that. Instead of trying to display them like in action poses or stuff like that, I'm just gonna stand them straight up basically the way i have my my dc classics is just standing straight up you know uh limited accessories and stuff like that so um but you get your stand of course you get your uh data file card which has a little bit of information uh on the back pretty cool added to the card collection and then of course the only accessories are his two guns, kind of like Desert Eagle looking style guns. But they are different from the Red Hood 
guns, so that's pretty cool. They're they're specifically made for uh, this figure, and also they do have holes in the front. So if you would like to pick up some uh, blast effects or something like that, you could put them on there, which would probably look pretty cool. And then let's go ahead and get into the McFarlane figure. Uh, uh, long time coming, getting this guy. Uh, really happy to finally have him in my hands. First off, let's look at the head sculpt. Pretty thick and uh, intimidating looking head sculpt. Uh, looks pretty uh, like he's scowling. Uh, has a little bit of that uh, uh, 12 o'clock shadow. Uh, pretty good articulation. Doesn't really move, look up. But I probably will be buying another one of these just to customize. So I might uh, hit the hit it with the Dremel. That way he could look he could look straight up and uh, down a little bit more. Uh, he does have his his uh, nice cape draped over the shoulders. It's not too soft, but it's not uh, too hard. He does have his uh, spikes on the shoulders that uh, pretty much go with the Flashpoint Batman. Uh, he does have the butterfly joints on his shoulders. He does have double jointed elbows. They are hindered a little bit by his gauntlets, but not a big deal. And he has the uh, ball joint hinge on his wrist. And of course you could get a tilt articulation in there. All in all, pretty good. Now, you, you gotta be real careful with these figures. I mean, uh, not too much, but I, I don't really think these are made for like kids. I, I think they're more like adult collectors. And as anybody knows, when you first get a, a figure out of the package, you, you gotta like loosen it up before you just try and force it. Cause that will pretty much will snap it. And then you have to go into repairs. But I have yet to have a figure break, like an actual part break. But I have had a couple of arms that pop off. Uh, mainly it's, you know, only been one, which was the, the Teen Titan Cyborg. Like his, his ball joint on his shoulder, it was just really, it didn't fit in there right and it would just pop out. But all in all, I haven't had that much of a problem. Uh, hot water is a big friend if you want to loosen up the figures. Also... Once I get them out and I get them in, in a certain stand, I don't really play play with them or, you know, like <laughs> like play around with them like a little kid. I just have them for display. So, I mean, it doesn't bother me personally, but I know a lot of people, if they have issues, they might not be too happy about it. You know, uh, kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Uh, moving down to his uh, torso does have a lot of cool articulation there but he doesn't have a waist swivel so that's a downer but you can turn him uh you can turn him like a human basically he doesn't need to go 360 around to at the waist there's no reason for it but as a human turns to the side he'll turn to the side so it doesn't really bother me a lot that he doesn't have a, a waist uh, rotation Coming down to the belt, really nice. That's what McFarlane's good at is the sculpting and the detail and all that. I think they just lack a little bit in the painting detail where they get a little bit of wash or like detail. But I guess that's what a lot of people have been doing is adding their own little paint details and stuff. So it kind of makes it fun for the, for the customized collector, but not so fun for the just regular collector that doesn't really paint and stuff like that. So, um, uh, another thing, I, I, like I said, you know, I like a lot of things about McFarlane and then some things that just scratch my head, you know, like, but let's keep going. Uh, he does have the holsters. They're not attached to his thighs, so that way they could uh, move as he move his legs. He has a slight swivel and then he does have double jointed knees. Uh, the ankle is the basic McFarlane articulation, and then he does have toe articulation. Now, the gauntlets and the shin guards on the boots have a lot of really nice hidden detail. 
uh, these are places where if you were to add like a little bit of probably like like uh, silver uh, where it shows like battle damage uh, underneath to the metal and stuff uh, I might end up doing that once I get another one of these also I don't know why but I think the head sits kind of low so I might want to see if, if if you picked it up a little if you picked it up a little bit just to see if it makes any difference but I think it's kind of like scrunch, scrunched down uh, so I'll have to see that once I get my custom figure that, that I'm going to do changes on and stuff, but pretty cool. Um, looking at the bottom, he does have a little bit of treading there. Up the back, uh, pretty cool. Like I say, the cape is, uh, not too soft, but not too hard. It's just right in the middle. And then I really like the, the sculpting that they did, like, draping down from the shoulders down makes it look really detailed and and like if it's cloth which is really nice and you got that thick neck from the back there pretty sweet you can't put his guns in his hands the the fingers actually fit right into the trigger guards which is nice Okay, there he is with his guns. I mean, uh, I really like this figure. Like I said, I might want to get one more for customization, but uh, he's gonna look really nice up there on the shelf. Of course, if you want to, you can stick his gun into the holster. They fit pretty good in there. It has a hole at the bottom where it peeks through, and then you could just pop it out again when you want to. So, uh, all in all, really happy with this guy. It was well worth the wait. Uh, I really like the character from Flashpoint, and I'm really happy to finally get this guy in the collection and get him up on the shelf. So anyways, guys, that's it for now. Pick this guy up if you really like him. See you all on the next one.